Hey, welcome back. So today I wanted to talk about this Craig 720 pocket hole jig. Um, this is a, this is a new version that replaces the K4. I'm assuming because you can't find the K4 anywhere now. Um, I had to buy this pocket hole jig because as you know, we're moving shops. This is our new shop uh, in San Angelo, Texas. And, um, and we're moving from our old shop, uh, which was basically our three car garage uh, in El Paso, Texas. And, uh, and I got here and I realized that I forgot to bring the K4 pocket hole jig from El Paso. And so I had to go buy one uh, at my local big box store. <clears throat> now, I use, I use these pocket hole jigs a lot. And I was a little depressed when I couldn't find the K4. And the only one I could find was this one, uh, but, uh, or, or the small manual ones. Um, but I decided, okay, I'm gonna give it a shot uh, and, and see how it works. And so I took this and I built uh, several things with it now, um, which you'll see. Now, like I said, I've used this jig now for um, about three weeks and I'm just gonna come right out and say it. Um, I'm not overly impressed uh, with it thus far. Um, the first thing is, is it's quite bulky compared to the K4, which um, if you, if you remember to do everything in the right order and, and you remember to pocket hold everything before uh, your final assembly, not a terribly big deal. But I have these cabinets that, um, that for some reason, and I don't know why, uh, for some reason I always forget to put the pocket holes in the sides and back of these, these uh, carcasses to hold on what will be the top of this uh, dog feeder is what it is dog feeding station. And I always forget uh, to, to uh, put the pocket holes in. So what I have to do is, is once it's assembled, I have to run the pocket holes then. And as you can see on the, now on the K4, I could usually take the K4 and I'd slip the K4 on, and then I would slip the whole thing together onto the side of the back and pocket hole it. But with this new jig, it is so big and so bulky that it complicates this whole process. And you'll see what I'm saying. What I have to do is I have to stick my drill in here. And then using two hands, I've got to try and maneuver the drill away from the wood and still get a nice flat contact surface on the back while I push this clamp down and then I can drill my pocket hole there. Now moving it along a single side isn't so bad because you can just kind of slide it and then kind of wiggle it all into place. And I have to use my impact because it's, it's the smallest of my drivers, I'm the only one that will fit in this tight space when I forget to do this. But again, now I have to now I have to clamp this and move this drill so that I can get relatively good contact. So then I've got my pocket holes in. And you can see that you know, that took me like probably four minutes, which on the K4, really I, I would have been done in, um, in probably just over a minute with the K4. Uh, <clears throat> this one's just, it's just too big to fit um, inside this little space that I have. And, and it's my fault, it's not Craig's fault um, for this. It's my fault for not remembering to put the pocket holes in in the first place. Um, but I did prefer the K4. I do prefer the K4. Can't wait to get it from El Paso um, <clears throat> and start using it again. The second thing uh, on this jig that I'm not in love with is this clamping pressure um, on, this, uh, on this unit here. Let me get a piece of wood. Now on the K4, the K4 had a, a lever style clamp, uh, a horizontal clamp on it, 
uh, that you could you could uh, uh, thread in or thread out, um, you know, basically infinitely uh, in terms of, of working with white, and get as tight a fit as you really wanted to get on the thing. I mean, you could you could tighten it so much that you would actually bend the plastic on the K4. This one has this little <laughs> dial here on this side that's used to um, to modify the tension uh, to increase or decrease the clamping pressure on your workpiece. And no matter, it seems no matter where I put it, um, it's just it's just not what I'm used to. So I'll, I'll turn it, um, it, it's got an arrow going plus, I'll turn it all the way to the plus side and I'll put my, my wood in here and clamp it down. And you can see that, that I can just pull that out. It's not, it's not real strong. Um, I'll turn it all the way the other way and clamp it again. And that's a little stronger, but it still moves. With my K4, that didn't happen. My K4, I could clamp that thing down and, and it, it would take a lot of force to, to get this in. <clears throat> Additionally, um, on this dial, it, it, it's got a plus and a minus. And, um, and I guess I'm not sure, I, I should probably read the manual, but it seems like, it seems like when you turn it, uh, you turn it counterclockwise, you're actually getting more clamping pressure. And when you turn it clockwise, you're getting less. Uh, either way, I'm not overly pleased with this clamping pressure. And, and to make matters worse, if you don't have the back of your workpiece completely flush up against the base of this jig, Say you're, you're, I'm going to over exaggerate this, but say your piece is in here like this and you go to clamp it down, what you're going to get is that little bit of movement there just, just makes it super simple to pull out and, and move around. Um, your piece is going to have to be absolutely up against this plate, perfectly flat, because what I've noticed in the mechanism of this is it really doesn't start to clamp until it makes contact with the wood. That's when the clamping mechanism starts to work. And then you can clamp it down and, and you'll get the most effect. But if you're just, and I'm going to pull this out like a sixteenth of an inch here and reclamp it. And just that little bit of resistance initially when it, when it makes contact, it hasn't moved the wood yet. It's just made contact with the wood. The friction is holding it on the bottom of the jig. So it's already beginning to, to implement its clamping pressure. And then as you're moving through the cycle uh, of applying the clamp, the, the piece will move. The piece will, will butt up against the bottom of this jig and, um, and you're gonna lose just that, that little bit of clamping pressure there. And so, so it's, just, it's just gonna be loose in this jig. So I'm not, <clears throat> I am not in love uh, with that, um, with that aspect of this jig, okay, you'll see that. It's just, it's just that. So, so when you're, and and that's unfortunate because, because you are putting quite a bit of force on this jig when you're drilling these pocket holes in, and and the the ever so slightest movement, left or right, when looking at it this way. Um, you're going to move the jig. You're going to move the jig while you're actually drilling the pocket hole screw or the pocket hole in there. And uh, so I'm not in love with it. Um, I've heard people say that the dust collection on this unit, uh, which slides here into the back, uh, is an improvement. I don't know. I don't use it. I uh, never have. Um, you know, basically that's, that's it. The, the idea behind this clamping system that they used was to make it easier for people who were who were pocket holing uh, different thicknesses of wood uh, one right after another. <clears throat> so, for example, for example, if I've got you know if I've got I don't know if it fit, yeah it'll fit. So I've got, if I've got an inch and a half piece of lumber in here, I don't have to reconfigure the jig like I would have had to um, on the K4, but. I only use primarily three quarter inch ply. So my jig is always set up the same way. 
But this clamping mechanism is designed to work no matter how thick of the material that you're putting in here. Um, now, now, this is automatic and, they, and, and they're doing half the work for you here, but you still have to change the, the collar. You still have to move the collar on the drill bit um, and they have your, your, your guide here down here on the bottom um, of where your, your collet will go. Uh, the drill bit is the same as the drill bit that comes with the K4. Nothing has changed there. Um, they do, you know, they provide you with the stop collar. Uh, that stop collar, I have a, a drawer full of Allen wrenches that I've collected over the past 30 years. Um, <clears throat> and none of them seem to fit this collet. It seems like, uh, it seems like that is the only Allen wrench that has worked for me uh, on this collet. So, it is what it is. Uh, just make sure not to lose that. That's really basically it. Uh, so this is it's 720. Uh, again, not terribly, not terribly happy with it. Uh, honestly, if I had, um, if I had to do it over again, I probably would have just bought the um, the manual, the manual double uh, double pocket hole um, plate uh, with the clamp, and done it that way because this uh, this just isn't working out as well as I'd hoped. So I was going to end the video there, uh, but I got through uh, the fourth uh, cabinet carcass um, using this uh, 720 jig. <clears throat> I got four of them done and I just uh, threw my hands up and said, uh, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, this, is, this is too aggravating. So <clears throat> I went to the store, I thought maybe I can find something better. Um, I went to the store and I picked up this Craig uh, 520 pocket hole jig. And uh, we're gonna see if this one works any better. Okay, so inside this kit, um, you've got the, the pocket hole jig itself. And you can see that, that <clears throat> the profile on this is, is quite smaller. Um, and I'm hoping it's a little more, more manageable. Um, really what's important to me though is the distance from, uh, from this, this, uh, this drill sleeve to the material. And so if I clamp this down, and we clamp that down with a three quarter inch piece of material in it, and we compare that to this handheld one, um, you'll see that we're about three quarters of an inch uh, shorter. Uh, on this deal here. Plus, this handle moves, um, so I'm, I'm hoping that this is going to uh, be a little easier to manage. Um, all right, so with that out of the way, I did realize that, uh, that you know, it, it's good to read directions. I told you on this other jig, uh, on the 720, that on the bottom, they don't have, they don't have guides here for uh, three quarter inch. Well, on the K4 you didn't have this, I didn't have it. Um, I guess on the drill bit now, they're actually putting, um, on the side of the drill bit, they're putting where it goes, uh, where the stop collar goes. So you just basically align your stop collar with this little window here, and I'm at three quarters. So I'll just align that there and secure that stop collar to it. Now this, um, this unit, this is the Pro, the 520 Pro. It comes with this um, uh, face frame uh, or face clamp. Um, I have now several of these uh, because I keep buying these jigs. Um, <clears throat> it only comes with one of the uh, square drivers. Usually every other Craig um, uh, pocket hole jig that I purchased came with both a long and a short square drive. Um, but this one only comes with the long one, does not come with the short one. Uh, so most likely I won't use that uh, because my space is limited. Now on the side of this handheld version, uh, you basically just got this, this stop here. You pinch in the sides of the stop and you slide it up to the size of the material that you're using. Now this differs from the, uh, the K4 and this 720 
The 720, obviously, it, it automatically adjusts to your material thickness. Uh, on this one, however, um, it's only got three stops on it. It's got one half inch, three quarter inch, and one and a half inch. Um, so if you're using material that is, uh, uh, is one inch, well, there's no stop on here for it, uh, as far as I know. Um, and it doesn't seem like, uh, uh, I haven't read through all the instructions, but, um, but it doesn't seem like there, there might be a way to do that. It doesn't matter to me because I'm working with three quarter inch material all the time anyways. So I'm just gonna set this to uh, three quarters of an inch and I've got my, my drill bit set to three quarters of an inch, which probably matches the one I already have. And it does. So I think I'll just use my old one um, and I'll put the new one back in this bag and save it for when this, this other one breaks because these do break. Over, over a period of time, period of use, the, um, the pilot hole portion of this drill bit uh, will snap off um, after, you know, using it a thousand times, two thousand times or whatever. But let's give this one a try and see if I have any better luck uh, or see if I, I get any less frustrated with this process. All right, so that's much better. Uh, that took me probably a third of the time uh, that it took me to do it with this jig. <clears throat> um, now this jig, it, it works like a, it works like an F clamp, uh, one of those, those pistol grip clamps, where you just, uh, you've got a clamping mechanism or a release mechanism, um, and it just goes on here, and you can, you can clamp it, uh, you know, ten times to to get it to go on there, or you could just pull this, uh, which works too. So if you're in kind of a rush, uh, you can just pull that and then clamp it down. And that's a lot faster. Um, I've got a little more clearance here, which is a little more comfortable for me uh, and, and reduces the, the risk that I'm gonna snap the, the pilot portion of this drill bit off um, simply because I'm, I'm not paying attention. Uh, so overall, I think um, uh, this is gonna go uh, in the drawer and I'll use this when it makes sense. Um, but uh, I think from here on out, I'm gonna be using uh, this guy here. All right, so that's my overall review for the, um, the Craig 720 jig and the Craig uh, 520 jig. Now, um, I will probably continue using this jig uh, when it makes sense, when my panels are not assembled, um, when I'm just working here on my workbench <clears throat> and I wanna slide something in, Clamp it down, drill it, uh, because drilling, drilling downwards is a lot more friendly. Um, but uh, when I'm doing things that are upside down, uh, as in the uh, the paint, uh, paint drying cabinet or paint drying tool workstation that I'm building, you'll see I have to do a lot of pocket holes upside down because once again I, I didn't put them in before I assembled it. Um, I'll be using this one, and I'll be using this one as well on these, these 20 carcasses that I have already built and assembled because uh, I have no other way of doing it. So anyways, that's the review of these two tools. I think they're both, I think they're both great. Um, you know, they both have their applications. This one I'm still not, uh, the 720 I'm still not uh, terribly in love with. I can't wait to get my K4 back. Uh, once I get my K4, this thing will probably just collect dust uh, inside my drawer. Anyways, thanks and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see when I post new videos uh, and, um, and get alerts when things change around here.